have to pull up my disclosures. We're live right now. Yeah, man. So if you want to pull the disclosures up, Amar, should we talk about those first or? Uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, just leave the disclosures on there until people are entering, right? Yep. Or They will be. I mean, there's some, yeah. let's see, uh, we got, uh, we're a 10 second delay. So all the cuss words that you make, Amar, I always got to delete it. <laughs> so 10 so seconds. Delay. I'm sharing my screen to you. If you can share it, put it up there. So while people are logging in. Right on. Oh, um, there you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, there you go. Gotcha, gotcha. Let me, uh, yeah, I just got back from Arizona. Uh, we we stayed in Scottsdale. Right you, to Old Town Scottsdale. What were you doing down there? Well, my kids had a break, and we wanted to get out of the house. So uh, we went to Arizona. Why don't you stay in California? California is so great for everybody. It is, but but it was eighty. I think it was like uh, uh, on Sunday. It was like eighty degrees in Scottsdale, so so it was nice. Mar, we know what you were doing. You were scoping out houses. You're like, I can't afford. <laughs> Dude, I'll say this: Arizona, the houses are so big. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I actually I met up with a couple of our old USA buddies. Oh, um, and and it, and it boggles my mind how big these houses are because that's so much stuff you have to clean. <laughs> like in my mind, I was just like, this, this is probably take forever to clean. Um, and it's so much stuff you have to cool. I mean, just think about the how. Oh much yeah, and that 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 alone. Do you, do you mind putting the disclosures up so we oh, can just yeah, have that yeah. while we're just talking? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Alan's from San Diego. I'm from San Diego. Uh, Man, I got We're the, in San Diego, Alan. And I got and Amar while waiting on Alan to respond. I got the door open right now because it's 71 degrees here, not a cloud in the sky. But my man Bruce up in upstate New York says 30 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's cold. Oh, that's painful, Bruce. That's painful. Nancy's in the Gulf Coast. Uh, James says Amar and Josh moved to Florida. Poway. Yeah. I um. I'm going camping. So I, I was lucky. Oh, Poway. Uh, I went to Mount Carmel High School there, uh, Alan. So Poway and uh, Mount Carmel are like rival high schools, Josh. Um, so that's where the, uh, that's where, that, that's the, the, the decrepit part of town. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Poway's nice. I actually, I used to be a firefighter for the city of Poway. That was my first job. Um, over off of Espola Road. Oh, cool. That's right. Um, I forgot about that. You're uh, going to be a fireman or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Until I uh, forgot the captain's name, but he basically didn't hire me um, and told me to go to college. So, wow. I went to engineering. All right. Hey, so um, yep. we, we can take the disclosures off and let, let's just put like our images up. And, uh, you, you know, before this live stream, Josh and I were talking uh, yesterday or the day before, and we we're saying, Hey, Amar, what type of questions are you getting from clients? Maybe we add some what's actionable now. What are people thinking about now to our 13 wealth management concerns? And I was laughing to Josh and, and basically saying nobody's happy right now. People who own equities think we're in a bubble and are, are nervous as all heck. And people that own a lot of fixed income are, are, are mad because they're not making any interest. You know, because it interest rates so well. Yep. And so one of the things that when I used to work for uh, J.P. Morgan and American Express is we use this product called Structured Notes. Yes. yes. And, and Structured Notes is a, an ability to give you exposure to uh, it's some sort of market-linked security and, and still provide you with some protection. And so what I think... You know, we were just talking about investments. Then we talked about qualified retirement plans. And so what I'm seeing a lot of is individuals that are retired and they're rolling over their IRA, uh, 401ks into IRAs. They're really considering these structured notes. And so one of the things that I thought would be useful is to just do a 101 on structured notes and what they're like and, and what you should be aware of, where are the risk factors. And um and hop into that. So, um, yeah, I get a lot of questions on them too. Actually, uh, people say I, you know, I got this email or I saw this guy on Facebook. Lots of questions, and um, 
they're interesting products. They're inter I'm not negative on them at all. They're an interesting product that I think offers opportunity. And, and back in my old career as a broker, I used to sell some of these, and I think they've come a long way since then. Uh, that's for sure. All right. So, um, Mar now, real quick, uh, Ken. So I don't sell anything. So I, there's nothing here for me. Uh, Mark, can you sell these? Uh, can, let me just. I want to be upfront. Um, if you can sell them, um, do you get commit? I mean, it's just. How do I want to say? I, I don't sell anything. Mark is paid, and I know he's a, a fee based planner. Are these in your portfolio of products you can offer to people? I guess what I'm saying. Yeah. So so yeah. let's let, let's uh, dig into that a little bit. Um, we don't manufacture any products across the board. So we don't have our own mutual funds. We don't have our own proprietary uh, structure notes or anything else like that. Um, the the second thing I would say is, yes, we offer structured notes okay. uh, through Fidelity and Schwab, but we don't buy off the rack structured notes. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find tailored solutions to our clients and meet our clients' needs with customized products that fit their timeline, their liquidity needs, their uh, risk tolerance. And so what we're going through today is a, is a deck that I found um, – through Axio Bank, uh, Axio Financial, it's a FINRA uh, firm, and and this is off the rack type products, and and we don't sell those, so we'll, we would customize a product offering to our clients, and we don't make a commission on these because we charge a uh, uh, asset based fee. Okay, so, gotcha. So, so it's built into our product offering that if this is the right product, then, then we would look at something like this. And, right, and really what we're trying to do is, is say that um, it's hard to take risks, right? When markets are all time high, you may feel nervous. Like I started with that people that own equities are nervous. People that own. So that Dow's down 400 points right now. So. <laughs> people that own. Um, uh so people that own equities are nervous. People that own fixed income are not happy because of interest rates are, are, are low. I think um, the LQD or uh, IGAB or whatever the Bloomberg aggregate bond index is, is actually negative for the year. So so that's why we're talking about structured products here. And before Josh, hey. you leave. <laughs> um, all right, gotcha. So. Let's uh, but but these are in your repertoire. That's what I'm going to say because I think there's a, I, I think there, I think these people. Well, I don't know about these people, but I think there are some people be interested, but they want to make sure they're buying them through a, a guy that they trust, and that's what. Uh, yeah. I want to sure. All right, so I'm going to bring this up here. You ready, Mar? I'm going to see. Does this come up as? Oh uh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, cool. All right, hold on, let me. Uh, I'm going to let you. Uh, all right, can you all see that? All right, Mar, you uh. Keep running, I gotta get my dogs. <laughs> uh, Josh. All right, so we're gonna talk about structured notes. Um, the first thing that you gotta consider, there's a lot of risk with, with any investment that you have. Um, with these specifically, you'll have credit risk, right? Because there's a bank or there's a financial institution that's underwriting this uh, product. And they could file for bankruptcy. We've seen like Lehman Brothers. We've seen a lot of volatility lately with some of the hedge funds. So there is somebody underwriting this security. Right. Uh, there's market risk, right? Because remember, these notes are tied to a, a marketable security. And that market security goes up and down. Just And so you can have some market risk. Uh, if, if you have a, a, a product that has uh, that you're looking for extra income, and then there's income risk. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but no. basically you got to check out, you know, the risk yeah. factors. You got to dig into the costs, the structures. Uh, what is the worst case scenario? You know, with some of these structured notes, uh, if it doesn't work out, you can end up owning the underlying security. And so that's something to be careful about. And I think what Josh alluded to early, earlier is that most of all these structured notes would default you to owning the, the core positions in that structure. No, that's not the case with most of them yeah. now, but, but you got to be careful because they're still out there. Yep. Um, can so you make, can you make it a little bit bigger by chance or would I take, would I screw up the screen? Uh, this is full screen. 
Okay. All right, guys. Oh, wait. I need to look it over here. Okay. No. All right. Go ahead, Mar. Yeah. Um, That's good. That's good. I like it. It looks good. I was looking at right. the screen. So cool. Yeah. So so this is what this is what we were talking about, right? The investment landscape is kind of challenging right now because uh, you know we got the government continuing to print money, right? So in 08 and 09, we printed a ton of money. People were upset. In 2020, we printed four times the amount that we printed in 08 and 09. People, you know, got upset and we're just continue to print money. Mark, right? did you hear this? I heard this. I haven't validated, but of all the cash that's out there, 40% was printed in 2020. Of all the dollar bills that are out there, 40%. I say that. I mean, again, I, I'm just, I haven't validated that. I haven't dived into it, but I just said, man, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, in uh, so so the James put up this comment, which I agree. If you retired in the last five years, uh, basically, well, actually, no. If you retired since, since let's say two thousand five, when the house when the rate started to drop and 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 the housing crisis happened in 07, 08, I mean, this is all a time period where it's been really challenging to be a retiree right. and recreating your income right and and that's why um you know we're talking about this as a way to allow you to take more risk but have some downside protection so um i'm not going to go into yeah. no, just, detail yeah. of this but i wanted to draw and yeah. i know last time i had an issue with drawing hopefully this time um uh, we don't have that issue so all right uh Josh, you're going to have to help me out in seeing uh, – can you see my screen here? Yep, absolutely. All right. So if I draw this correctly ah. – all right. So this is like a structure note. Think of this structure note is you're putting money into a product, and of that product, let's say nine. if you put $100, let's say, into this product, $90 is going to a fixed income instrument, right? So you're getting some interest on this instrument. So this is like an IOU or a bond. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. That was a lot better than last week. Yeah. Yeah. And then over here, with what, what the company does with the remaining $10 is that they take that money and they buy options. Okay. So, and most structure notes have a, a fixed time period that you have to hold them for. So in our, all of our examples, we're just going to use five years. Okay. Oops. So, so what this means is this, this bond, this $90 that the institution is underwriting, you know, they'll pay you 2.13% yield. And I know that because I just, I did the math to get you to a hundred dollars at the end of five years. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's protecting your principal, right? Mm -hmm. So if these options, these $10 go to zero, right? This $90 at the end of five years, will get to a hundred, hundred bucks and you get your money back. Right. So in some of these, it's important to understand that these options is what's creating the actual structure. No, nope the bond portion, which is a majority of your money is creating your protection or your down, like whatever the insurance that you're getting in this product. Right. So let me go back to this. Um, and I don't even know how to clear my drawings. So um, I'm not sure how to do it. Um, what are you but, trying to do? Yeah, it, but does, do you, do you see my, um, my other screen now there, Josh? What are structured products is what I see. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. So, here, this, this is what we just, I guess, what I was trying to draw here. And uh, too, too bad I can't write on this while we're doing it. Sweet. But here, essentially, you know, this is $10, 10%, and this is 90%. Yeah. And, then, and that's how they get you, you know, your, your flexibility there. So, so remember, because 90% is in the traditional security, that is the credit risk, right? So we talked about credit risk before. The credit risk is, is that company still going to be able to make those payments, right? 
Yeah, like with Lehman Brothers, that was the issue in 2008. I mean, they uh, I don't know what happened to people who own the structured notes. Seemed like the preferred, you, I just can't recall, Marv. I remember preferred, Lehman Brothers prefers, I can't remember. Anyway, just, but you got to be careful. I mean, if you're getting some crappy company, five by nine company writing you these things and it goes kaput, you're done. That's all there is. Yeah. Well, it's like any bond, though. I mean, let's, let's, this is the issue. Yeah, I was reading some of the guys before he came on here, some of the negative stuff on structure notes. I'm like, well, that's that's true of any stock or bond, by the way. If you own Lehman Brothers stock or bond, you're screwed anyhow. So it's not like it's only exclusive to this. Yeah. Right. And and, and if somebody says something negative about a structured note, it's, it's you got to figure out if you know what note they had because there's there's a thousand different types of notes, right? right. Yeah. And you can't. It's like saying. Um, Negative uh, about an ETF or something like that. Oh, ETF suck because this one sucks. This is just yeah, nice. yeah, no. So right, this is a good one, yeah. So, so this is just showing that it's growing. Uh, you know, it's a growing marketplace. Like uh, in 2014 to to when this deck was created in 2017. <laughs> you know, and I bet now it's even more and more um, big time. Guarantee yeah. it's ten times. Well, not ten times. Yeah. Guarantee it's a lot yeah. bigger for sure. So the main type of structure notes that we're going to go over today fall in three buckets, right? One is I want market participation because I'm I want a growth oriented structured product, but I want to limit my downside. So so this is going to be like the first type that we talk about. Another one is to increase income, increase yield, right? So you know if you have fixed income or you you have. Uh, you know, bonds that are paying two or three percent, and you're like, "Hey, I would like to get more than two or three percent, and I'm willing to take on a little bit more risk to get that um, extra yield." Then we'll, we'll talk about that, and then we're going to give you an example of um, like a principal protection type product, yeah. right? And th these remind me, just real quick side note here, Josh, as the annuities that that have equity indexes that they're yep. pegged to right yep. and and those equity index annuities say that there there's no losses just right. like these do uh, but i think structured notes are better than those because of two things there's not a variable participation rate exactly right like it's everything is disclosed up front yep. and you already know the cap rate yep. going into it right yep. so um in most equity index annuities those two items are flexible based off of the insurer's ability to pay. <laughs> exactly. Based on it. It's like, a, uh, <laughs> so I'll, I'll take the first example right. if you, uh, if you don't mind. So nope. this is, um, stock market participation with limited downside protection, right? So, uh, I'm a visual person, so I'm going to draw this out here in a bit. So, so I think the key things to, to hear, to, to understand here is that this is a five year structured note. The downside protection buffer is 20%. So zero to 20, yeah, yeah. you're not losing any principal, right? It's, it's puts it right here. It's down 20%, no loss of principal, right? 100%. There's no losses. But once the SP loses more than 20%, right, there is uh, some loss of principal, right? And um, that is 1% for every 1% the index is down more than 20%. So I'm going to bring up my uh, my drawing pad here. All right, Picasso. <laughs> Let's see if this works. This is the first time, uh, or I tried to do this last time with the options, and it, it was just horrible. But um, a disaster, Amar, disaster. Well, the part of the problem is... Just Maybe my pad is upside down, or I don't know. Fine, dude, it's fine. <laughs> Just give me our time. So this is um, let, let's use the x-axis as the S and P. Um, and this is percentage return at the end of five years. Okay, and there's a couple key markers here that they said in the slide above. So there's ten percent. There's 25%, and then there was 60%. And to get the benefit of the 
uh, of this participation in capping the downside that they also cap the upside too, which we're going to go into here. And we're going to say that this is profit. So, God, if I was doing this perfectly, this should be right around here, $10, right? Because this is 1.2 of that. Here is $30. And here's 50. All right, so it's not to scale, but we'll make do, right? And then here is our cap at 20%. Uh, oops. Doing these things live uh, definitely puts you on your uh, making sure you're, you're trying everything correctly, but I think I got that right. Yep. So essentially at 10%, uh, there's a $12 payout. So you would be just above here. And then at 25, there's a 30% payout, uh, $30 payout. So you'd be right here. And at 60, you're capped at $50 payout, right? So essentially this is a, a line that goes like, should be going like that. Then from zero to 20, you, there, there, there's no payout. And then from 20 onwards is, you know, like a 45 degree angle line where it's a dollar for dollar on the downside. So, so at the end of five years, if the S and P five hundred did, well, let's let's just look at it. I uh, I actually brought this up earlier. So let's look at some real life examples. If you bought this structured note, February twenty fourth two thousand six, the market at the end of five years was up two point three six percent. And so what did we get on uh, the structured uh, note here? You got 2.36%. You did just as good as the S&P 500, right? If we look 07 to 12, where the market was down 5.64% for that period of time, then this structure note, you didn't lose any money, yeah. right? Minus dividends, just FYI. There's no dividends. Yeah, minus dividends, right? The, I mean, this is not including, th this is just on the equity return that, that, that we're looking at here. And then we look at the last five years, 2016 to 2021, the S&P 500 is up almost 100%. You know, if, if today was an update, I'm sure we would have hit 100%. And uh, and here you're capped at, at, at your $50 per hundred. Yeah. Um, cause you know, 50% is the cap on the upside, right? So this is a way where, you know, somebody can get participation, limit their upside to have the benefit of uh, knowing the first 20%, they're not going to have any losses. Yeah. Right. And then after that is dollar for dollar. Right. So, but still after, but even if the market is down 50, you're only down 30. I mean, that's, you know, that's just, that's what makes it, you're still losing 20%. Are you still eliminating 20% of the downside is what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Then you're only limiting 50% of the up potentially, but you could get the entirety of the up for five years. That's, that's what makes it attractive. And, and the yeah. second part of that is not having the dividends. One of the things I, I, I don't want to discount dividends, but you know, let's be honest here. There was the S and P 500 yielding right now, 2% or more, if even that. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit North of 2%. Yeah. And, so, and the 10 year treasury is <laughs> close to, you know, 1.2, I think. 1. No, right now it's 1.6. It's had a pretty big oh. run. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, for five years, um, the compounding nature of 2% dividends isn't huge. Now, for the course of your entire investing career, it is. But for five years, you know, not having 2% dividend compounding over a five year time frame isn't the same as not having dividends compounding over a 40 year uh, time frame. That's for sure. So, if especially if you're considering that the market could go down, then you say, okay, I'll sacrifice a 2% compounding dividend to avoid the first 20% of the down. Eh, there's some, there's some attraction to that in my opinion. Not for everybody, but you know, it, it products fill a need, right? So you got to make sure that this product fills your need. Um, um, you want to take the next one? 
Well, let's talk about liquidity. What's the likelihood if someone needed cash, they could get their money out? Not very. This is really money you want to not touch, right, Amar? Exactly. No exactly. So if we have uh, the bucket strategy, this is yeah. like the last bucket that you touch. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and again, if you're aggressive, if you're moderate or above, you're probably better owning the underlying securities than any of these. But if you're that moderate to very conservative to I want principal protection. If you're in that range, I think structure notes uh, play a better, bigger, uh, have a better opportunity to play a role in your financial picture. I'd also say more to that. Look, we're not here to sell you on this stuff. I'm, we're just yeah. here to give you the, my, my point in a Mars is too. like, look, you got to do what you got to do. If you're cautious in your approaching retirement, um, and I tell a lot of people, Mar, look, you know, look at something like the Wellesley, uh, as a, uh, a primary source uh, for right now, that does, I don't make investment recommendations, but the reason being is because it has a nice track record. It's 40% uh, stocks, 60% bonds. Uh, the fees are quite low. The point being is we don't want to get killed in the first year or two of retirement. You know, the, the sequence of return risk, I think most people recognize. But it's even more than that. It's something emotionally. Say, man, I am. I was talking to a guy today, man, uh, yes, yesterday. He's like, look, I've never been through retirement. I, we got more money than, you know, we got enough money, I know, but still it's nerve wracking. When you start decumulating, you're not trying to get the upside for heaven's sake. We're trying to make sure that you don't get killed and you can put your head on, on the pillow at night. It's just that simple. So it's kind of like, all right, you're going to sacrifice some upside for the comfort of knowing you won't get killed on the down. Well, we don't know. I mean, anything could happen, but generally speaking, you're not going to get killed on the down. And there's something very valuable for there. So for me, I'm not touching with a 10 foot pole. I'm 50 years old. Amar's not touching with a 10 foot pole. If I'm about to retire, I might think about something like this for sure. Um, Why don't we hop into the next one? Why don't you go over that one? All right, yeah, I'm going to share my screen on that though. So that way I can, uh, okay. I got it up here, Amar. Um, but you keep yours there. I, well, actually, I don't do it. Do you have to do it? Let's see. I'm going to share my screen here and I'm going to go to example two. Um, and these were the ones that, uh, I was it uh, income fix. I can't remember the ones I used to sell were usually 18 month one principal protection. Maybe that's the next one. I can't remember. Right. Well, let's go into this. These are, uh, uh, higher than current fixed income rates, which is everyone hates the current fixed income. The rates are low. The rates are going higher. So thumbs up guys. What is the, uh, not thumbs up comment An increasing interest rate does what to your bonds. All right. Put one, if it makes the bonds go down in value, one, if it makes the bonds go down in value, or two, if it make the bonds go up in value. So put that in because all that live chat stuff, Amar, just helps with a stupid algorithm. So remember, increasing interest rates, it does what for bonds? One, makes them go down in value. Two, makes them go up in value. All right. So what we're seeing here, just to, if, if y'all could just go ahead and put that in there. Uh, just because it helps with the algorithm. Um, income higher than current fixed income rates because everyone hates it. I mean, we're talking with CD. Amara was looking at CD for a guy yesterday for five years. It was like freaking 25 basis points for a certificate. Couldn't believe it. All right. So we got a uh, three year typical cobble annually. That means that the rates change. They can, they can take back your money and make you whole. That's what happens. Uh, S&P 500 and then Russell 2000, the lesser of the downside protection, 70% principal barrier at maturity. They're going to give you 6% uh, paid annually, uh, paid quarterly, excuse me, paid quarterly. So let's go look at the income scenarios, quarterly observation. Neither index falls by more than 30%. Neither index falls by more than 30%. You're going to receive one and a half percent every quarter. All right. So you put a hundred thousand bucks in there. Neither index falls by 30%. You'll receive uh what's that? 6,000 bucks. Right? Too shabby. At least one index falls by more than 30% from issue date. You're not going to get anything. All right. So we know that you won't make any money if more than one index or if one index falls by 30%. So as long as an index does not fall by 30%, um, you are, you're, you're going to get in this case, one and a half percent per quarter. Now, if memory serves them are, um, it, it is, if it can fall, it's not quarter to quarter. I think any time in that quarter, 
it can fall 30 percent and then you don't get anything even if you still if you start the quarter at 100 it fell to 60 but by the end of the quarter is is back up to 80 i still think you skipped the payment do you know well, so this is why you have to read the perspectives yes, on yes. all of these because each one is different, right? right. So you could have somebody that has a uh, quarter to quarter lock in, right? Yes, so, yes. But it has to be on the date of the quarter. Yes. Those are good structured notes. Yes. If you have one that have a structured note that any time in that quarter, if it drops by 30%, you skip a payment, then that, I would say that that person probably would have a bad experience with the, with the exactly this, you know, similar type structure note, but just one nuance there well just what happened last the q1 of last year you know i mean we had a 30 percent, 35 percent decline but it came back up by the end of the quarter so um and, and we try when we're using structured notes we try to make it on the date so on the yes. quarter date not not any time the ones uh we used to have when i was at leg mason smith barney it was any time any time and uh i remember that too because you say well as long as it doesn't, because there's a, this is relatively new concept back in 2005 and six, but anytime this, the market fell below a certain threshold, buddy, it's just pop, 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 pop. Hey, Loudy. Anyone want a dog? <laughs> um, all right. So security, so principal scenarios can security calls. So anytime it's a callable security, not just this, but even like a callable bond. Um, even preferred stocks, you get your 100% principal at call date. So you start with 100,000 bucks. Later on, they call it within the year. You still get 100,000 bucks back and you get your money that you received if you did receive any income over that time. Uh, neither index has fallen more than uh, 30% over. So was it three years? So if neither index has fallen over 30% from year one to the end of year three. Not only did you get 6% income per year, but you also get all your money back at principal. Now, at least one index declines from the issue date by 30%. All right, so once you go down to that, uh, that uh, hole in the ground and you're down 30% between now and year three, the end of year three, uh, the principal declines proportionately. So you, get you will get a 30% loss. So it's not a principal guarantee. It just says, let me, hey, go ahead. No, it's not a principal guarantee. Yeah. And and oftentimes some of these, you you end up owning the underlining holding. So I I, I saw one that a client had uh, from, from their outside account that they had a basket of securities, Apple, um, yes. I, yeah. IBM, like Google, just think of a bunch of securities. And based off those securities, they were driving income, right? So if it broke the barrier, then that client owned all those securities. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And then you just have to, you know, you write out the waves just like you do with the other investments, but you got to know the worst case scenario, especially in these income type um, structure notes. Let's do third. This one, I like, I like the better one. You want to do, let me bring it back up. We'll do the third example, Barn. You can do that. I, I, this is, I like the first and the third probably more than the second one, actually. Um, I, I just, I don't find this a whole lot of, well, I'll let other people die. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So um, this is the third example. So, you know, in here, they're trying to link it to CDs and principal protection. Yeah. Uh, remember, it's most are principal protection because, and that's the insurer protecting the principal, just like if you had an annuity, right? But some also come with FDIC insurance. Right. So you got to, there's, there's a difference between those two uh, that I would just like to highlight right here. And uh, so like I did with the other one, let me just bring up my whiteboard. You're drawing my, my drawing pad, if you will. So in, in this one, so there's a baby. These are the dollars that you get. And this is the S&P uh, percentage return, right? So no dividends is just 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 total, re uh, just the equity component return. And so there's some key time periods in this. So there's a 30% and then there's 10%. And this is over uh, five years, okay? And then there's a, a payout. So one, two, three, four. Oh, 
again, this is not going to be the scale, but I think you get the point. Here's a ten dollar payout, and then here's your thirty twenty dollar payout. Okay. Actually, I may change the look at this, Josh. I'm getting fancy. Are so you there, man? over five years, if the S P had a negative return, you got your principal back, right? That's this blue line right here. So you always getting your principal back. This one is not FDIC insured. This is based off of the ability of the insurer to pay. So, you know, got to make sure that you watch the credit worthiness there. And then you have a payout like this, where if the S&P 500 over five years did 10%, then you got, you know, dollar for dollar. And I'm going to pull this back up just so you can read it here. Yeah. S&P 500 goes up 10% over the five years, right? So we have a five-year maturity, then you got 10%. If it goes, so from 10 to 30, you get capped at 20%, right? So this is the 20% cap. So again, if we look at real scenarios, which if I can pull up here, let's look at the first one. So if you bought this in February 24th, 2006, over five years, the S&P did 2.36, you got 2.36. If we look at one year later and it's 07, and the markets went down over five years, then you got zero. You just got your money back, right? So this is, the key here is that you're, you're reducing downside exposure, right? With the first and third. So here you got $0, um, you know, you, you're nothing, but you got your principal back. Uh, and then the third one, which I just looked at, you know, which the market we've had so far in the last. So if you bought this in uh, 2016, well, you got the cap 20%, yeah. right? And, uh, you know, just saying rough math, that's, let's say, over five years, that's 4%, right? Yeah. Um, CDs were not paying 4% in 2016. I know that. <laughs> I mean, I was part of the, you know, we have uh, we have brokered CDs where yeah. like banks would create CDs and you can buy third-party CDs and they're not paying 4%. And Josh, you just said right now, CDs are paying a not quarter there. percent not for a five year or something. Like yeah, I'm sure, it's, it's I'm sure you can find a maybe like one percent, but uh, you know, so so you got you got to take what you what you want. So 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 one of the things in terms of strategy is you can find some of these products that are a one year maturity, right? So these yes. numbers would be all different, yeah, yeah. but you could ladder one year. Uh, S and P 500 structure notes with the uh, principal protection. And eventually some of those will pay, you know, uh, you know, this may be the upper end, maybe 7% uh, here in like a, a 3% uh, return. Right. But that's higher than what CDs are paying now. And you're, you're not going to lose. I mean, I guess you lose the, if you had a thousand dollars invested, was that, Twenty dollars of interest potentially that you would have gotten if you had a CD right. versus. Wow, yeah. and here's here's a three year at Navy Federal. Now this is a variable, but it's paying point uh, three nine right now, man. Point three nine. That's a, that's Navy Federal. That's not a bank. That's a, a credit union. That's that's just not going to get the job done. It's nuts. Um, I mean, you got six to twenty four month CDs APY as high as. 50 basis points, three, uh, three months to seven years as high as 0.95. It's freaking nuts. That's a Navy federal. I mean, you, uh, yeah, yeah. so I, I don't know when you start looking at what else is out there, you say, okay, now the drawback is, uh, on these things is, is that you might not make any money. Um, that's, that's a fact, but, uh, at least Navy federal, you're making 0.39. <laughs> Wow, I mean that's on a hundred thousand bucks. Was that three hundred ninety bucks uh, a month? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking yeah. at. Uh, bear with me just a second. I look at certificates at PenFed because PenFed is typically the uh, the better one out there of the credit unions. Um, yeah, and they got the same thing. Our C a one to five year C one to seven year CDs as high as 0.65. That's I mean 
it's, talk about a tax on savers, man. It's nuts. Um, that's just that's just straight up ugly. So I'm not a fan of CDs in this day, day and age. And I like CDs, but I mean, it's like if you don't need well, even with CDs, you don't really have access to the money. I mean, my goodness, you still got to break the bank. So I don't know. It's kind of like if you're going a CD route, why not look at something like this? Yeah. And so 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 maybe um, some quick tips with this would be like m most of the time we like to have structured notes and qualified plans. And the reason is, is that when this pays out, m depending on how it's uh, how it's structured, the majority of them pay out as ordinary income. Yeah. Right? That, you know, the gain. So like you're going to get taxed on that. And, and so, well, one of the things, you know, this is misconceptions but i think some of these are, are are true in the fact that some people think this is too good to be true well the reality it, it's not i mean like i said with the index annuities they're doing the same thing right with your money uh and they charge an m and e uh do they have an m and e fee or what do they have they have an administration well, fee i'm sure they got an m and e fee too man absolutely um it is kind of complicated. So you have to work with a, I would say it's best to work with an advisor uh, to help you navigate some of the options, a competent advisor. Um, yeah. It's too liquid. Yes. I mean, you're going to lock up your money for a period of time. And I think the other thing to mention here is that these get mark to market on a daily basis. So when you're looking at in your account, you're going to see it go up a lot. You're going to see it go down a lot. It's going to be all over the map but it doesn't matter. It's on the maturity date. That is what matters uh, for most of these uh, structured notes. Uh, too risky. Yeah. Um, I think there's risk in everything, right? Uh, I read something the other day. There is a cost of doing something and there's also a cost of doing nothing. Yeah. Right. And sometimes the cost of doing nothing is bigger than the cost of doing something. So um, yeah. Uh, some uh, characteristics uh well there's here. a dividends right there so that's good um you know, and lack of liquidity i mean but i the lack of liquidity is why you don't put uh, th this is the this is the thing with structured products is like we always uh, uh, naysayers on every you know they always have a negative and it just drives up the wall I'm like okay yes you don't have access to it well you really shouldn't have access to your stocks either frankly i mean what i mean by that is if you're investing in stocks, yes, you do have access to it. If the market fell 54% from October 2007 to March 9th of 2009, yes, yeah, liquid, but you'd be a fool to pull the money out. That, that's, I mean, okay, your liquidity for sure. That doesn't make any sense. The dividends, I, look, I, I get it. I like dividends and I wish uh, we all could just ride comfortably in the sunset getting dividends. But if you're going to trade something, you're going to sacrifice. If you're going to, Trade X for less risk, you're going to have to give up X, and that's the dividends, which the bank or whoever's issuing the – oh, hey, do you want to show the people that uh, that list of uh, structure that you had sent me before? Should we go over that? that yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to do that in, in a sec. Okay. So let me just run through this here real quick. So you have to ask questions, number one. What Josh and I were doing today is hopefully providing educational-based material. We're not making any recommendations, right? So this is – um, purely educational. You got to figure out the risks, figure out how those risks affect you, et cetera, et cetera. But here are some questions to, to ask. Um, key takeaways again, structured products are linked to marketable securities. So that's how they're getting the, the yield. It's that option piece. Um, these are customizable, right? Like you can, and the things that we do is that we, go to fidelity and say we want to get this type of exposure yeah. what type of structured note can you create and and so you you know if you're buying off the rack type of a structured note uh it may not be right for you or it may be right for you you just have to make sure you do your due diligence um and i think that's the last part here so gamestop uh, is up 86 percent amar i know you leveraged your house to buy some gamestop didn't you <laughs> Um, All right. You have um, a thing for the yeah. You got your you got a table for that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull it up here in a sec. So, um, hey, so while Mars pulling that up, what's uh thoughts, questions, comments on that, guys? Because I get this a lot. I just the, the point is there's so many, and Mars gonna show us some of the 
the variabilities in these products. And it's, it's impossible to know the best. I actually like what Amar was saying. The one, the shorter time, one year to 18 months, I like. Anytime you do it short means there's inherently less upside. That's just a fact. But uh, I like it short uh, just because anytime it's uh, – whether there, when you have more moving parts, is more likely for a part to break, and, uh, and as such, the, the 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 quicker you can get access to your money, the better. Which means you won't make as much on the up. We're not trying to make money on the up. If we're trying to make money, the stock market is your only bet, in my opinion. That's all there is to it. If you're, I mean, without gambling, and stock market is not gambling. If we're trying to make money to increase our portfolio, our net wealth, then you should just be naked in the stock market. Um, but if we're trying to protect what you've accumulated because you want to, you can't af afford a 54% decline. Well, there's other products for that. You just, we got to, we got to change our mindset from accumulation to decumulation. Oh, here we go. Got it. Cool. So, so um, you know, this is going with the Axios theme. So these are their offerings through different banks that are insuring right now. So again, these are the growth type notes with a downside buffer. And then uh, you can see there's Goldman Sachs, there's Morgan Stanley, Barclays, HSBC. Um, Pick out, it's hard to kind of see on the thing. Just read off one of them, Mar. It's uh, what uh, gives, gives, like, look at one of those Goldman Sachs ones. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like, what does it say for, I can't even read it here from here. So, okay. so uh, Dicker? if I click on this, does it open up? A oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Let's sweet. Oh, here you go. Yeah, sweet. There you go. Good. So you, this is kind of like their prospectus. This is their the regulatory filing. So this is the thing you should read. Um, it's 26 pages, but the first couple pages provide you a kind of like a big picture, uh, like a summary, if you will. So on this one, um, uh, so it's uh, it looks. Like it's buffering the downside. Um, is it, so actually, I'm just going to, instead of going reading through this, just for time's sake. Yeah, right. Uh, here it says you get 100% return of the S&P 500 and uh, NASDAQ up to the uh, max return of 25%. Um, and then it has some downside uh, protection. Um, so that that's that one, but, um, it, it's kind of hard to, you have to read through these. That's why I'm, yeah. not, not the best. Oh, oh, so just, how about like a CD, right? Like a CD, um, oh, well, this is a six year CD and it's based off the volatility index, um, uh, yeah. which is, but since this is offered by a bank, it is FDIC insured. The, um, what I'm saying. So the, the issue that we have here is that there's so many of them that's impossible to say our structure notes good or bad. It, it's completely it's it's just silly. It's silly to say that our structure notes good or bad. It's kind of like Dave Ramsey. Annuities are or not Dave Ramsey. And maybe it is Dave Ramsey. Who's Ken Fisher? Ken Fisher. Ken Fisher. Annuities, Annuities are bad. Annuities are bad. It's just yeah. such a stupid thing to say. Um anyway, it's just a kind of of purpose. You have to make sure that the purpose is aligned with your purpose. Exactly. exactly. Not that yeah. somebody's selling you a product. It's just that, the, that there's alignment there. I like this um this, the, this question, JD Thompson, right there. It says, yeah. Yes, yes th these are different than variable annuities. You know, the main thing with variable annuities is that you're taking the underlining risk, right? So if the investments go up a lot, you're going to participate in that. With most of these, they have a cap on the upside, right? But then when investments go down, you're going to feel 100% of that with a variable annuity. Whereas here, there is, um, you know, some buffering, if you will, on the downside. Now, most variable annuities are not sold as just variable annuities. They have riders associated with them. So the biggest difference that I would say with variable annuities and what we're displaying here is that the internal fees within a variable annuity will be close to about, I would say, 2% on average. Or uh, I mean, two, like, I would say a really cheap variable annuity yeah, yeah, would be yeah. 1.5 to 1.75. 
uh, average annuity, variable annuity would be around 2%. And then on the most expensive with all the riders and all the bells and whistles, you could be up to 3%. Oh, I've seen 3.85. Absolutely. Yeah. And so here there are no riders, right? Uh, and, and so it's basically, if these are the outcomes, yeah. this is what happens in each one of those outcomes. And if you're comfortable with that, then, and that's, you know, you're not paying for guaranteed income. You're not paying for uh, a death benefit or anything else like that. Well, also variable annuities really are supposed to be long-term contracts. I and mean, that, that's the point. These things really need to be looked at short-term, Jill. Uh, a variable annuity, you're saying, look, I'm willing to be in the long term in order to later annuitize that contract to get a monthly income that I theoretically could not get elsewhere unless I had the annuity. So because it's a long term contract, it you know, really needs to be looked at t- the 10 to 20 years uh, because you're paying for fees over the long term and the fees don't go away if the market drops either. That's what drives me up the wall about variable annuities. Um, well, these things are really need to be short term. I, I would just say, look. This way, going back to the, my first book, I did a chapter on borrowing from your 401k uh, in which to uh, finance a car. And so you don't have to finance a car. And my my premise is, hey, and this is what I did. I said, man, I got a feeling the market is going to take a dive. I'm going to get out and I'm going to take the proceeds via a loan from my 401k and go buy this car that we needed. And I'm going to pay it back with dollar cost averaging. You know, my theory was that the market would crash and then I can get, I took it out the top, no taxes, bought my vehicle, which I needed and paid it back dollar cost averaging while the market was low. Actually, it didn't work out like that, but that was my anticipation. I said, I just feel like the market is too high for whatever reason. I can't. I think it's a 2011, 2013, maybe. But if that's you, but I, I wasn't retired there. You see what I'm saying? I, I didn't just you know hang up my boots and go on to the. Uh, uh, the great wonder of the what the hell happens next in retirement. I, I, that wasn't me. So even though that was it proven not to be the best move, it still worked out. But for someone who just retired and they just want to kind of short term reprieve without leaving everything in cash for a couple of years, this works good. Variable annuity won't get that done. Um, the, the last thing on the variable annuity real quick is you're paying. This freaking infuriates me. You're paying for a death benefit when you're most likely not going to ever use a death benefit. And the death benefit, the M&E, as Amar was talking about, can range from 25 to 75 basis points every year. And it's on the cash value. It's not on the actual death benefit itself. It's insane. It's the most insane expense that there is ever known to man. It's even worse than freaking Sniffy Joe's uh, 10% for the big guy he gets. It's nuts. And I hate the freaking fees on variable annuities because a lot of them are never used. Here, what you see is what you get, as long as you know what you're getting. Jill, you put in 100,000 bucks. We either know you're going to get 120 out or you're going to get 100 in five years. I mean, I'm just using that for simplicity. You put 100,000 bucks, you're either going to get 120,000 at, at the end of five years or you're going to get your principal. One of those two things. Okay, that's it. So I, I, I like these way better than variable annuities, as you can probably tell. Um, so there was a question, you know, we don't know. Riders you recommend. So, uh, James, you talk about for variable annuities. Uh, you want to go on to this a little bit there, Amar? I'm not sure. I, I think there are no riders on these things, right? On structure notes. Yeah. And structure notes don't have riders. Yeah. Right. But um, so, so one of the questions somewhere in there that I saw was Would you own this in a taxable pre tax Roth right. account from a tax perspective? And again, for uh, for most of the clients, you know, we're not putting 100% of a client's money into structured notes, right? You know, this is 10, 20% on the high side. Um, so a majority of these are done in um, IRA accounts. And the reason is, is that most of these pay ordinary income when they uh, distribute. And so, you know, you want to get favorable tax advantage stuff uh, you're already paying ordinary income on distributions on your on your IRA anyway, so so it's it's not a, a disadvantage. In terms of assets that you want, now everybody has a different opinion on what you should own on taxable versus uh, uh, pre-tax versus Roth. You know, our perspective is that you want your growth investments in your Roth IRAs or your Roth 401ks because that's where you want the most growth. Yeah. 
uh, you want your buy and hold type securities in your taxable account. So you get long-term capital gains. And then you want any high transaction or uh, bond type where they pay ordinary income type investments in your IRA. I think that's a good framework to work from. Um, Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, what I saw riders. So, uh, Mar, just explain to uh, Jeremy. He's from Maine, so he's not that bright. Um, explain to him what a rider is, if you would. Yeah. So, um, annuity contracts typically will have added benefits, which they call riders, that you can add on to your policy. So, typically, a rider will give you a benefit that you can use during your lifetime or at, at, at death that gives you an extra dollar amount that you wouldn't be able to get on your, by yourself or it takes some of the risk off the table, right? So a popular one over the last, I don't know, 10 years has been a guaranteed income withdrawal benefit writer, which basically is taking money out of your account. Well, it's actually a little bit more complicated. There's a phantom account and then there's your actual account. Yes, exactly. And they're taking money out of your actual account based off of your phantom account value, right? And so um, it, it, is, uh, it is one of those things that you have to kind of really look into and, and understand the fees and expenses. And one of the things that, that concerns me about all these riders that people do end up buying is that some of them don't even use them. Uh-uh. Most, you know? I'm saying, most don't. Uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, you'd so be you, better off owning the, the underlying securities, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, index funds, whatever it may be. So, let me give you an example of that. Um, it'd probably be better if I had a whiteboard, but you bought a variable annuity in 2007 for 100,000 bucks, right? Uh, what happens is you're buying a death benefit that says, no matter what happens, Jeremy, when you die, your wife will get no less than $100,000, if that makes sense. All right, so you fast forward until 10 years, and now your account's worth, we'll say, 200 just for simplicity. A lot of times, the riders will keep your death benefit uh, following suit. They'll say, okay, now your death benefit's 200000 bucks. So if you die, your wife will get no less than 200000 bucks. But you're like, but I already have an account that's worth 200000 bucks doesn't matter. You're going to get your, 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 what your wife is going to get the, the cash value, but you're still paying for essentially a $200,000 life insurance, even though it's not even there. So now let's say the market falls 30%. So now your account is worth 140 as opposed to 200,000 bucks. <laughs> it's crazy. So you have a $200,000 account of de death benefit, death benefit, but the account is now worth 140. So then you jump off a bridge because you can't take it anymore. So your wife gets 200,000 bucks, all right? So she got 200,000 bucks. Your account was worth 140. So her, she's only getting $60,000 of life insurance. So for all that time, you've been paying 25 to 50 basis points, one quarter, one half, sometimes 75 basis points, three quarters of a percent for basically the essentially a $60,000 life insurance policy, which the vast majority of time will never use. It's the freaking nuts, man. And uh, just, it, 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 oh, it just infuriates me. Now, with that said, variable annuity contracts, Kim, or not Kim, uh, Jill, who asked, they do uh, re pay the dividends. So we know for variable annuities that the underlying holdings will pay dividends. That is a fact. So that's one of the benefits of variable annuities. They're few and far between, though. Um, uh, Kim says, is a rider like hurricane insurance against the principal? Um Hurricane insurance against the principal? Uh, uh, yes, it's like an addition. It's just an add-on, Kim, for expenses. I would say it's more like when you're buying a car. You know, for an extra five bucks a month, we can give you tires. You know, for an extra eight bucks a yeah, month, we can give you tires. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right. So what's happened? So Jeremy has a $50,000 life insurance through the Army Guard. Um, that's SGLI. And once he separates from service, uh, it'd be called VGLI. Hopefully you read my book, Jeremy, on VGLI versus SGLI. Veterans Group Life Insurance is not a cheap proposition by any stretch. Uh, so, again, uh, James, there are no uh, riders and structure notes. One of the benefits are there aren't any. I mean, it's literally what you see is what you get. That's, that's a fact. I uh, actually don't like the structure notes that are in a basket of dollars in terms of uh, – your know, currencies and stuff like that. That's where it gets too complex for me. I, it's on the S&P 500 or the IFA, 
which is the uh, uh, the developed market. I'm fine with that. But if it's on baskets of currencies, I, we had one, some guy was selling a Mars like on a, a three different baskets of currency plus emerging markets, plus I can't, the 10 year treasury. I was like, this, this is insane. I mean, just keep it simple, stupid, man. <laughs> um, uh, Lynn says, I asked too many questions and my advisor quit. Can't blame him, but I agreed to switch to ICM ETFs at 1.4% as my ex-husband's for 15 years in American funds. Should I have kept it there? I, I don't know, Ken, or Lynn. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I like American funds, so my first inclination is maybe, but uh, water on the bridge now, I wouldn't, I uh, nothing to do about it, so I wouldn't worry. But now you're banned because you asked too many questions. Um, that's Lynn's first question. I, I'm not even going to, I won't even pose that to Amar just because that's that's a little bit too uh, looking like we're coming as giving advice and Amar, we got to be careful there. For educational purposes only. I have not link in the description. Oh, for my book. Yeah, just go on Amazon, brother. Amazon. Okay, here we go. So Quincy wants me to ask you, Amar, because you are threatening, um, <laughs> whether he would leave money in the TSP or roll it over into an IRA. Uh, Quin Quincy has heard that TSP is more secure against creditors. Any thoughts on that? No, don't add, don't answer as of what you would do, but just more. Let's get the underlying question of is yeah, it so the underlining question is exactly uh, should I leave money in a TSP or roll it over to an IRA? And it's not a simple question because it depends on your uh, your, your investment option in the TSP. You have the life cycle funds, and then you have the guaranteed fund, income fund, uh, stock fund. So again, limited. And investment options, but the benefit is that it's it's super cheap. I think it's like four basis points or, or, or three basis points. The guaranteed fund, um, you know, it's buying long term treasuries, but you don't get any of the downside uh, uh, exposure there when when rates go up like they have. Uh, the one thing, uh, and maybe Josh, you can help me with this, is that in the TSP. Yeah. If you have a non stop yeah, Maddie was just on. Maddie's on the live stream. Huh? There's my daughter. She's back from Georgia Tech. Rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. She just waved. <laughs> and the TSP, if your beneficiary is a non spousal beneficiary, it's immediate payout. Yeah, right. And, and, and with the SECURE Act, uh, if you have a non spousal beneficiary, most of the time they're getting a 10 year distribution time. So, um, th that is one of the biggest, I would say, reasons why people consider moving it into an IRA. The second being investment options. Um, although yeah. most of the time those investment options will be more expensive. They didn't, uh, they, they uh, modernized the TSB uh, in 2017. I think Trumpster signed the bill. Uh, it didn't modernize that much, frankly. Uh, it actually ticks me off because those uh, so what happens when you die, it goes to BPA, beneficiary participant account for your surviving spouse. And then when she dies, there's just a lot of issues going on there. I, I frankly, it's insane. However, be careful rolling out your TSP 100%. My man, Chris Barfield, at Barfield Financial, which everyone who has any exposure to TSP needs to go to, Chris Barfield at barfieldfinancial.com. Uh, he writes about this all the time. And there's some, I can't remember what it was, but he says, look, if you're going to roll the majority out of the TSP, the TSP used to have a, a competitive advantage that they're so doggone cheap. But those days are gone, man. The, the competitive advantage of TSP is no more uh, because you can buy the index funds at Vanguard, Schwab, all the, over the place are basically at cost. So there's no competitive advantage. Um, the, the restrictions on distributions are insanely stupid and it sucks. And so as such, my inclination is, yes, you should roll it out. However, you've got to understand what you could be leaving behind if you roll the whole thing over. So I would, I would highly tell people to go to Chris Barfield's website at Barfield Financial. It's uh, it, it, If you don't and you roll it out, you're, you could be making a critical mistake. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what the mistake was, uh, but it's bad. In terms of security, the IRAs are secure. Now, what happens is uh, the inherited IRAs are not against creditors. So IRAs are absolutely secure. I mean, it's up to states. Uh, so people say, well, the state of Wyoming might be less than the state of Pennsylvania and eh, whatever. They're all secure. When you die and leave it to your kiddos, 
The inherited IRA, beneficiary IRA, is no longer a void of lawsuits, as witnessed by a 2014 unanimous Supreme Court ruling from Clarence Thomas, the, the good guy, versus Sonia Sotomayor, the bad guy. Uh, the, they all you agreed unanimously that beneficiary IRAs are not exempt from lawsuits. As such, you got to keep that in mind. Um, Josh, where can I look to figure out if contributing to my non-matching TSP is a good or a bad idea? I did not change the new blended retirement system. I think it's just fine now. And uh, Quincy says, thanks, Amar. Hey, what about me, man? Hey, man. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I'm just going to tell you right now, um, Jeremy, uh, look, I, I, I'm just telling you, the, the, the deferrals are way more used than they should be. Deferrals, I mean, I'm getting a tax deduction on the front end for tax deferrals until I pull the money out. I just I work with people every single day who've got decent figures in their IRA deferred money and are going to get hammered tax wise because they have not done any planning because they they drank the Kool-Aid of defer on all costs. Defer. In fact, I was talking to a lady today. Um, her and her husband, thankfully, um, had watched enough of my videos that she switched over. She's so basically she's working, making 30,000 a year just for the health insurance. Uh, husband's retired and basically they're in a, uh, they're, they don't pay any income tax. And uh, she was initially doing a 401k, a 43b contributions uh, into uh, of basically 50% of her income into her uh, defer 403b. And they were living off the cash until she got some social security. And I said, dude, that's nuts. You're not, you're literally not deferring anything because you're in a no tax, you have no taxes as it is. Turns out her husband said, no, no, we we uh, we put that to the Roth. I said, thank the good Lord. So basically what's happening here is don't get too caught up in the deferrals. They ain't all that in a bag of chips, man. I'm just telling you right now, you've got to look at your situation. Remember where your tax bracket is today versus where it will be in the future. And if you think it's going to be the future lower than what it is today, I'd want to know why you think that. Always think your tax bracket is going to be higher. Um uh, Hey, right on, Quincy. Quincy said, thanks, Josh. Dan's up in New Hampshire. Right on. Uh, Jeremy says, he's using the Roth version, right on. Um, uh, James, I like the structure note. I, I agree, 100%. Um, uh, uh, I, I think having structure notes as part of your portfolio makes sense. I really, really do. When people email me with a 28-page prospectus and say, can you look at this, tell me this is a good one, I just, there's no way I can do that. And I, I get that probably a couple times a month. Yeah, this is one, and I, I just, there's no way I can look that over. Uh, are 401ks exempt from lawsuits as are IRAs? Uh, these are all under ERISA, JD. So the answer is yes, absolutely. ERISA plans are more stringent from uh, uh, IRAs in terms of being free from crazy, uh, what we call creditors and predators, because there are a lot of creditors and predators out there. Uh, Gary says he agrees with me as well. He should, Amar. Um, if only <laughs> I can get that tag on a martyr agree with me. Uh, RMDs are now at uh, 72, and I think they'll probably be changing till 75 here shortly, it sounds like. Uh, is But yes, your RMDs are affected if you start taking distributions. All right, so Mar, don't answer this question. All right, so I'm going to put, put another thing in here for the people who are comments. Uh, Gary says, are your RMDs affected at 72 if you start taking distributions at 66? So the answer is yes. How are they affected? That makes your RMD go down as one, go up as two, or go sideways as three. All right. So assuming we live in a vacuum, if you pull money out of your 401k you deferred accounts now at 66, what does that do to your RMD when you hit 72? It makes it go down, up, or sideways. Uh, my cubby has offered us the uh, raw 401k this year. Right on, Claudia. Hey, Claudia is new to the program. Appreciate you being here. All right. Harry, oh, can people follow directions? <sighs> Harry, <laughs> I said one for down, two for up, and three for sideways. Oh, I'm like an elementary school teacher here, Mar. Anything. All right, so Mar, how much, like, uh, if someone wants to talk to you about this, um, and we put the, the stuff in the notes, but, like, what – what do you do uh, if people are interested in this? And again, I, I do not want to sound like this is a sales pitch. It is not. However, these could be a good thing for some of you all out there. And there are many people out there who are selling these things that they shouldn't be selling these things. 
But but they are, they are, Pablo, it's just me. Every time I bang on the table. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. It. All right. So, Amar, and uh, what what's uh, how how do what would you suggest? And if people want to get a hold of you to, to go over this, what any thoughts or um or, or comments on that by chance? Yeah, you can just reach out. Um, my our website is clientfirstcap.com. And then, clientfirstcap.com. And then we have Client First Capital Learning is our YouTube channel. How many subscribers you got now, the big guy? I think it's 260. Whoa, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. <laughs> Pablo, uh, I love that dog, but man, he's got the loudest bark ever. All right, so with clientfirstcap.com, I didn't do it on there. And then Client First Learning. My first learning client. My first capital cap. learning channel and is our YouTube channel. And then it's client first cap cap.com. Um so do me a flavor, folks. Subscribe to Amar's uh, YouTube channel if you haven't yet. Um, and the reason being is because we want him to get some of that uh sweet, sweet George Soros money um from the uh, the videos. So once he gets a thousand subscribers. Um, he can get uh, start making that sweet, sweet money too. Um, what you, what's your thoughts on this, Amar? If you can see that question, do you see it? Yeah, I, I would say um, structured notes are geared towards reducing uh, for people to take on more risk, but yeah. reducing um, exposure, right? So, like, really as you get more conservative as an investor, right? Moderate to conservative structure notes become more attractive. Typically people that are geared towards retirement are starting to become more conservative because they want those dollars to be there to, to recreate income. So I would agree with, I would agree with that comment. And, and also too, uh, Jeremy, we don't, we, you gotta be, you don't want to put your whole portfolio into a structure note for sure. So, if you're if you're not retiring, uh, ideally you're still in accumulation phase. In that case, I don't. I, I I'd be hesitant to recommend these for accumulators. So let's put it that way. Uh, there need to be a real serious reason for that. Uh, lovely day to look out the window. So that uh, you know, look. Please spell a Mars YouTube channel name. It's just client. Oops. Client, client first capital learning. Learning. That's it. Yeah. Ben said so, Las Vegas, um, where the market's getting pummeled. All right, folks. Amar, have you got anything else you want to talk about here? Um, no, but we should wrap it up because uh, we got to gotta get going. I got to get going. Right on, man. Appreciate y'all being here. So next week, we'll do it back on Wednesday, right, Amar? Yep. Amar's, uh, his mom had COVID. Or wait, she had COVID? or she, oh, she got the COVID vaccine. Vaccine. Is she doing okay? Yep. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, oh, I thought you said she had it. I was like, Oof, uh, that's not good, but uh, but she's doing okay. Okay, cool. So we had to post this one till uh, Thursday, but next week we'll be back on Wednesday. Off the top of your head, do you remember what the topic is? I don't by chance. And, oh, by the way, guys, if you all have topics, um, maybe I'll put that, Amara. Maybe I'll put that as a uh, – we still want to do the well. – I'm sure you can do a poll. Like I've yeah. seen on YouTube, people have polls. Yeah. So, so okay, maybe we can do that cool. because we want to mix relevant trending topics that are now as well as the 13 wealth management concerns. Yeah, and, or whatever people is interested in too. So, I mean, it does, we're not just – ideally, Amar and I would be doing this every week. I mean, you see what I'm saying? I and mean, that's uh, that would be fun because that way we can have just Q&A the whole time. But there are 13 things we'd like to talk about. But if you all have uh, uh, topics – okay, well, last question here. Um can you take your money out before retiring? Yeah, but uh, absolutely, James. Um, it's not contingent on retiring at all. It's just contingent on the time frame of the structured note that you're taking. Secondly, you got to be careful, like Amar was talking about, too, the tax consequence. Um, it, it is taxes, ordinary income, mostly. Not all the time, but mostly. So you just got to be careful in that. All right, Josh. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I'll stay on. Hey, all right. So I'll stay on if you guys, uh, I guess I, you know, we got, uh, it's not, what time is it right now? Uh, 1.43. All right. So let's talk with just while we got you. Uh, markets are down 4.07. Now I got someone. Let me. Wow. That's loud. All right. So I, I was going to stay on here, but uh, 
There's someone out there blowing the leaves, so I think I'll get off. Uh, just remember, guys, the markets are down 407. The Dow is still 31,548, man. 31,548. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're still way up from where we were just a few weeks ago. So, no reason to panic. And last, I do want to talk about some of the point about the 10 year treasury. Yes, the 10 year treasury is at 1.5. Um, I mean, if you just look at this right here, you'll see this is a two year time frame. So you see the 10 year treasury is just back where it was a year ago. Uh, that's it. So the uh, 10 year treasury being where it's at isn't, I mean, yes, it's high. It's gone up fast, but <laughs> it's just because of this insanity of Fauci. Apparently Fauci's telling us to freaking keep our masks on. He can kiss my big fat behind. I cannot stand that guy, man. I'd love to see Fauci get his, get fired. I, I just, I'm sick of that guy. Yeah, guy. I just, ugh. He caused Trump the election. I'm just telling you right now, it's Fauci. Trump fell for it. No, it still drives up the wall. All right, my friends. We'll see you on the on the other end. Appreciate y'all being here. Thank you, guys.